This meeting is being recorded. Hello, everybody. Hey, guys. How are you? I'm Barbie, and this is Flora, and we're two friends in the Bible. Thank you again for stopping. Uh, last week, we studied about the feast, you know, since there's so much going on in Israel right now and the talk of the feast that we decided to do another video on the feast. And this week, we are going to start talking about Daniel and the 70 weeks prophecy. And we're going to start off first with the Daniel prayer that's in, in chapter nine, right? Yeah, chapter nine. And then next week, we'll actually get deeper into the study of the 70 weeks of Daniel. Um, I know a lot of you probably hear about the 70 weeks of Daniel, but might not know exactly what it is. So we're going to talk about that starting next week. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, the book of Daniel foretells both the first and second coming of our Savior and Messiah, Jesus. It gives us a timetable to calculate these comings. This prophet, prophecy, the 70 weeks prophecy, is the most significant of all. You can't study Revelation without knowing Daniel. We will be studying the 70 weeks prophecy in detail. This prophecy is not mentioned in other books of the Old Testament, and it's also not mentioned by the epistles. God may have kept this disclosed until it was needed. A generation is coming that may well need that information. It is our opinion that, is, that this is the generation for this disclosure. We also believe the time has come for some of the mystery to start being revealed. Mm -hmm. And before we start, in order to study the book of Daniel, you have to understand some of the definitions or the words that are associated with the festivals and the calendars. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can attach this real quick so that you guys can see. These are some of the definitions, and I will put this in the um, description box when I upload it so that you can print it if you want to, but these are the main important um, definitions that we'll be using throughout the study. Um, when you're reading this or when you're listening to this video, I'd recommend either printing this or at least pulling it up on your uh, computer screen, but we're gonna actually leave it up as well while we're going through the study. All right, so we're gonna start with correct. Hmm? And Barbie, if you wouldn't mind, I would I would like to say this. I would recommend highly, like Barbie said, print this because on the future weeks, we're really going to be using these words a lot. It will help you to have it in front of you um, so that you'll understand the, the 70 weeks prophecy of Daniel. So yeah. this is going to be important, and that's why we're attaching it to this week's study. Right. Yeah. And um, me, myself, I use it all the time when I'm studying Daniel because mm -hmm. I have to get like a refresher course, <laughs> you know, and remember, wait, what was the Shemitah? What's the Shabua? You know, all that. So, okay, I'm going to read these real quick. And if I mispronounce them, I apologize. Um, Karath means to cut down, cut, or kill. It refers to Jesus's crucifixion. Shabuam, Shabuam means sevens. It can mean a week of seven days, or it can also mean a week of seven years. Shabuwa is, very, is a very specific unit of time made up of seven Hebraic years. Calculating Hebraic years in this way, they are in sync with both the solar cycles and the lunar cycles to calendar years. And I know some of this might not make no sense to you, right? might not make sense to you right now. So just bear with us. It will make sense once we get... Go to the study. <clears throat> uh, Mabim is God's appointed time, the feast of the Lord, and those are the feasts we studied last week. Shabuwa, um, look, we got that on there twice. Okay, um, wait, no, Shabuwa, um, seven Hebraic solar lunar years divided into six units of productive labor and one unit of rest. Israel used the Shabuwa of seven years. Six years that would be productive toil, and then the sabbatical year. I apologize. I didn't realize I had that there on twice. That's okay. <laughs> Better twice than not it on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is the sabbatical year, the year of the Lord. The land is not tilled or planted, lays fallow. Seventh year is at rest. And that the sabbatical year in the Shemitah, it's a seven. Um, one of the things you probably heard us talk about 
in the past, if you're watching our videos, is that we just entered the new Sumida cycle. And, it's, mm -hmm. and they, it entered around September 26th. And so what, it, what that means is they started the new seven year cycle. Uh, Shemitah is a seven year cycle. Six of those years, you plow the land, you fertilize the land, you work really hard. And then the seventh year of that Shemitah cycle is called the sabbatical year. <clears throat> and from September 2021 to September 22 was that sabbatical year for Israel. And that means that they rest. Okay, so we'll get more into it, but we did just enter a new Shemitah cycle, so another seven years. Uh, Septuagint is the equivalent term, periods of seven, or hedomades. Septuagint is also, um, isn't that the Old Testament? It's what they called it in Greek. Um, jubilee is, mm -hmm. it is, yeah. 50 years is a jubilee year, and that's seven years times seven years equal 49 years. The 50th year is the jubilee. Always happens on the Day of Atonement, which is the 10th day of the seventh month. And again, we're gonna explain all this. Leap year is every three years to, the, to adjust the calendar. And the Dead Sea Scrolls are, are Jewish Hebrew manuscripts located in 1946 and 1947 right before Israel became a nation in 1948, which I find really, really interesting that they happened to find the Dead Sea Scrolls right before they became a nation in one day. <laughs> Pretty cool. Okay, so now we're gonna start with um, studying Daniel's prayer. And um, Flora, can you get us started on that part? Sure. I'm gonna start off by a quote that Anne Graham Lotz um, actually said about Daniel's prayer. And for the, if you don't know, Anne um, Graham Lotz is Billy Graham's daughter. But she said, it is a prayer that storms the gates of heaven until things change. It is passionate, heartfelt. I won't let you go until you bless me pleading until you get an answer. It's the Daniel's prayer. So what is Daniel's prayer exactly? Yeah, I love that quote too. Um, Daniel's prayer exactly is mentioned above. This particular prayer takes place in Daniel 9, verses 4 through 19. So before we start breaking it down, let's read it directly from the Word of God. And I'm doing this from the King James um, Bible. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed inequity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from the precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in the name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off. Though all the countries wither, thou hast driven them because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants and prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they may not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake, unto, which he spake against us, and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil, for under the whole heaven hath not been, had not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is come upon us. Yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our inequities and understand thy truth. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. 
for the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, which he doeth, for he obeyeth not his voice. And now, O Lord our God, thou hast brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and hast gotten thee reown as at, as at this day. We have sinned, and we have done wickedly. O Lord, according to all righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city Jerusalem, the holy mountain, because for our sins and for the inequities of our fathers. Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now, therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate, for the Lord's sake. O my God, incline, incline thine ear and hear, open thine eyes, and behold our desolations, and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake. O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And one thing that's very important to remember as we've read that prayer, um, this, is Daniel, this is Daniel coming out of several terrifying visions of Israel and the church's future. And Barbie, can you break down these verses for us? Yeah, I can. And that is such an amazing prayer. Um, you know, he's he's just saying, you know, we, you know, how wrong Israel had been. And and, and I like the one who doesn't say they, they. He says we, you know. He's mm -hmm. not trying to put all the blame on anyone else. And if you guys don't know, because of all these things that Daniel just said, in his prayer that Israel had done is why they're in Babylonian captivity. When Daniel was doing this, when he's writing this, when he's saying this prayer and he's teaching and he's um, <clears throat> prophesying about the 70 weeks of Daniel, he's in captivity in Babylon. Um, and the reason that God allowed that to happen was because of how they were doing in Israel. They weren't, they were just, and so, you know, basically what Daniel said. So I'm going to break them down now for you. Okay, so we're going to start with Daniel 9, 4. Daniel prays to God. He acknowledges that God upholds his promises to those who obey his commands. For those of us unfamiliar with covenants, these were essentially a two-party agreement. If you upheld your end of the deal, the other party was required to do so as well. Often, if you broke a covenant, mm -hmm. it would result in death. Okay, we're going to talk about the Abrahamic covenant. Uh, God promises to Abraham were numerous. Some were personal. God promised that he would make Abraham's name great, Genesis 12, 2. That Abraham would have numerous descendants, Genesis 13, 16. And that he would be the father of many nations, Genesis 17, 4, 4 through 5. God also promised two things to the future nation of Israel. They were promised the land of Israel, and they were also promised that all the nations of the world would be blessed through the seed of Abraham. This was a reference to the Messiah. Daniel had faith that God would restore them to that land. God keeps his promises. Not only was God going to address the land aspects of the Abrahamic covenant, he was also going to reveal the coming of the Messiah, the one who would be the blessings for all nations and who would eventually do away with Israel's sins forever. Israel was punished for breaking the rules. In the Abrahamic covenant, God himself paid the price if Israel broke its promises. How wonderful is our God. Yeah, in that covenant, if they brought the promises, God was the one that was going to pay the promise. I mean, pay the price, not, not Israel, but it's cool. Uh, God cut the Abrahamic covenant with Abraham and Israel. God was saying, in essence, Abraham, if you or your descendants break this covenant, let this be done to me. That will be done. This too good to be true provision is the unilateral aspect of the covenant. Later in the 70 weeks prophecy, the angel Gabriel would use this Hebrew word, kareth, kareth, in regards to the Messiah. Then after the 62 weeks, the Messiah, kareth, is that kareth or kareth? Kareth? Well, I'm not sure of the exact pronunciation. I'm going to pronounce it the same way you do. I'm going to say Kareth. I don't know. 
Um, let's see. Then after the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off, Kareth, and have nothing. Daniel 9, 26. Kareth means to cut down, cut, or kill. This refers to Jesus' crucifixion. Isaiah gives a fuller rendering, rendering of the same Hebrew word. He was cut off, Kareth, out of the land of the living for the transgressions of my people. Isaiah 53, 8. My people being the Jews. Jesus paid the price when Israel and all of us by the means of our sin broke God's covenant. We must never diminish Jesus's amazing love that he poured out for us on the cross. Now we're going to go over Daniel chapter 9 verses 5 through 6. Daniel moves to a time of confession. Daniel doesn't portray himself as blameless. Daniel admits that he, along with his people, have disobeyed God. Not only that, but God sent prophets to warn them of their impending future, and they didn't listen. The fact the Israelites ignored the prophets would have been fresh in Daniel's mind, as if warning Daniel of future events. God had chosen Daniel to be one of his prophets. I was reading um, some of Jeremiah and Isaiah here recently last week, and yeah, they're completely... You know, it was a couple hundred years, but they were given warnings that they needed to get on track, and they didn't. <laughs> so Daniel chapter 9, verse 7 through 14. Daniel acknowledges the consequences of Israel's sin. Because they sinned, God scattered them. Those in the northern kingdom were displaced by Assyria, and those in the southern kingdom by Babylon. Although God relents for a short period, if his people continue to disobey, sin's consequences tend to keep up with it, catch up with them. Okay, and then Daniel chapter 9, verses 5, 15 through 19. Here Daniel remembers that although foreign powers such as, such as Egypt had taken out over Israel in the past, God hears his people's cries. You can look at the book of Judges to get more information on that. Eventually, God always relented and had mercy on his people, bringing them out of their bondage. Daniel asked God to turn away from his anger and relent on his punishment. He reminds the Lord that Israel is his chosen people. Daniel opened his repentance with an appeal to the Abrahamic covenant. He ended it by directly stating that Israel did not deserve the mercy of God. Although Daniel's primary goals in repenting the sins of his nation and calling upon God were the restoration of the land and the temple. God's compassionate response addressed the underlying sin issue, which caused the desolation of the land in the first place. Um, Flora, can you um, actually go in and just summarize the uh, prayer? Sure. Um, so what are some of the main points of David's prayer? If we break down Daniel's prayer into bullet points, it looks like this. God, here's how you've moved in the past. God, here's how I or we have messed up. God, you warned me about the consequences of our sin. And God, as I'm experiencing these consequences, I call upon your mercy. A key part of Daniel's prayer is confession. We often don't like to explore our sinful nature, but Daniel was keenly aware of how important confession is. And we'll dive into this topic more in depth. But before we get to that, since we mentioned Daniel often as seen praying, let's explore the other times he prays in scripture. Daniel prays throughout, you guessed it, the book of Daniel. And we often also find him praying in the strangest of places. And I'm going to break down several of these times of prayer and what this says about the nature of prayer itself. In Daniel um, chapter 2, let's look at Nebuchadnezzar's dream. To cut a long story short, the king of Babylon has a, fr a frightening dream, and none of his magicians can figure out what happens in the dream. Nebuchadnezzar gets peeved and decides to murder all of the wise men in the land. Daniel asks him to relent for a while so that Daniel can try to interpret the dream. God has already given Daniel the gift of interpreting visions. Daniel prays to God, and God reveals to him the contents of the dream. Daniel tells the king, and the king spares the lives of the wise men. What we learn from this prayer. 
Daniel prays for wisdom when he doesn't know what to do in a situation. He asks for revelation. Sometimes God hasn't revealed everything to us, and we need to give, we need him to give us some answers, and we can pray for those. And then let's look at Daniel 6, um, before the lion's den. Daniel moved up in the ranks in the courts of Babylon. Let's just say others in the palace didn't like his progress to the top. They noticed that Daniel often prayed to Yahweh. They decided to get Darius, the Persian king reigning at the time, to decree that for 30 days no one could pray to anyone except for the Persian king. This would not be the first time someone tricked one of the Persian kings into making a law he couldn't undo. And you want to look at the book of Esther for more on that. Um, but despite the decree, Daniel continues to pray several times. What we learn from this prayer is that Daniel knows the importance of communicating with God, even when death is on the line. As Christians, we can anticipate persecution for our beliefs. It may come to a day where prayers are illegal for us, as they are for many of our brothers and sisters worldwide. The power of prayer is so mighty that it is even worth risking our lives for. And uh, that says a lot. And, you know, we we do a lot of studies on revelation. We know that things are going to get worse. Um, we will be persecuted more. We will make we might get to the point where prayer is illegal where we live. Um, it's worth risking our lives not to break that communication with God and, and to have that relationship with him. So, Barbie, I'm going to. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about the prayer in Daniel 9, and we focus on, on this in the study, but what can we learn from that prayer? I'm going to let you take that part of it over. Okay. Yeah, and it is, I mean, you know, especially if this is the end times, which a lot of people believe, um, you know, Flora and I have said many, many times, we don't treat, we don't teach pre, mid, post, any of that. What we tell you is to be prepared as if you're going to be here for the whole seven years. So make sure that you understand what all the seals are, what the trumpets are, what who the um, Antichrist is, the abomination of desolation. We have videos on all of this and the mark of the beast. Because, you know, if you believe it's pre-trib, just think about what if it's not and the seals start opening and you're not realizing that they're opening because, yeah, we think they're going to be bad. But if you look at them, the first three, look like they've already opened. I mean, based off what's going on in this world, I don't know that they have. I'm not saying they have, but so, you know, it's very easy to be confused. Now, the trumpets and stuff, that might not be as much, but the seals, at least the first five, you could get fooled, especially what's going on in these last couple of years. And, you know, think about this. Um, her Nelson said this, that what if, you really were dogmatic and you believed that pre-trip was the only way and it turns out it wasn't let's say it was mid or post and then the mark of the beast comes on the scene and you think to yourself oh rapture hasn't happened yet that's not the mark you know mm -hmm. but if you've really been studying and stuff so just try to stay with that and um so yeah we have all those videos out there um, but it's going to get worse. I mean, Christians, you know, they've been getting persecuted for years, but now we're being kicked off of medias, media platforms and stuff too. So yeah, it's just a matter of time. But now we're going to go into the, um, mm -hmm. what we can learn from Daniel's prayer. Okay. So I want to highlight there are two verses in Daniel chapter 10 that are crucial to understanding Daniel's prayer. An angel speaks to Daniel in response to his prayer. Daniel 10, 12 through 13. Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have <clears throat> and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. So the angel was trying <clears throat> to get there, but he was uh, the prince of Persia wasn't letting him. Mm -hmm. something vital from this passage it may take some time before we see the answers to a prayer although the angel most likely refers to one of the less remembered prayers 
The famous prayer in Daniel 9 makes the same point more subtly. Remember, Daniel's prayer likely happened at the beginning of Daniel's exile. He prayed for deliverance, and, it, and Israel still had 70 years of captivity before his prayer got an answer. Similarly, similarly, similarly sorry, Exodus mentions the Israelites crying out to God in their slavery in Egypt, and their slavery ended after 400 years. Although God might, God might answer our prayers right away, sometimes spiritual warfare can delay the answers from reaching us. Patience goes a long way when it comes to prayers. Um, we learn other important things from Daniel 9's passage. Daniel's prayer emphasized the importance of a confession and seeking forgiveness. Mercy, mercy and healing cannot happen until we admit our sins and wrongdoings. Furthermore, Daniel's prayer teaches us the importance of knowing God's character. It's important to know that God will allow us to fall into sin and its consequences if we will continue to return to it. But God is also merciful. He hears our cries and binds up the wounds of his people. Position mm -hmm. for prayer by reading scripture first. Follow scripture's lead toward what you pray for. If prayers the, tra if prayers the train make scripture the rails, Pray humbly, recognizing your utter unworthiness before an all-holy God. Begin by praising God for his attributes, his greatness and faithfulness. Let God's character provide the context for prayer so he's the center of gravity, not you. Confess your sins, taking full responsibility without rationalization, spin, or self-exemption. Permeate with the firm affirmations of God's amazing grace and your profound gratitude. Never asking for what you deserve, but thanking him that he's given you infinitely better than you deserve. Before bringing your request, repeatedly affirm God's worthiness, worthy, worthiness and your unworthiness. Never forget who you are and who you're talking to. Never blame God for sin, its consequences, or for life's hardships. Make request in light of God's past acts of faithfulness. Re rehearse those acts to God as demonstrated in scripture, history, and your own personal and family life. Pray for God's sake, his glory, and his reputation, reminding yourself it's all about him, not you. Pray with a heartfelt recognition of God's undeserved grace on behalf of you and others. God hears our prayers and starts responding to them when we pray with Daniel's attitude and perspective before we can see results, and even when we can't see results at all. God deploys angels on missions in response to humble, biblically-based, God-centered prayers. Prayer mobilizes righteous angels to engage in intense turf warfare against fallen angels with kingdom claims at stake. Answers to prayer may be hastened or delayed as a result of this warfare. Yeah, so in that, in that verse that you just read a minute ago, or excuse me, that I just read, Daniel 10, 12 through 13, you know, it even talks about an angel, you know, basically, you know, tell him, you know, it took me this long to get here. I, I came in response, but it took me 21 days to get here, but the, because the prince of Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Who was the prince of Persian kingdom? Is it Satan? Yeah, you know, he, he kept bringing that answer to uh Daniel, he didn't want him to have the answer. So God sent the answer fairly quickly, but because of spiritual warfare in the way, it took him 21 days to get the answer to him. So, you know, we, we can't see the spiritual warfare going on. You know, you've got angels and demons fighting all the time or angels and fallen angels fighting all the time, you know, protecting us, uh, you know, um, intervening on our, our behalf you know, through Jesus, you know, Jesus is our intercessor, but, you know, that's what they're doing, but we can't see it, um, so if you figure Daniel, you, you know, was sent that prayer, and it was 21 days, which when you're in captivity like that, 21 days could be super, super long, um, mm -hmm. why don't you tell us more about prayer in our daily lives? Sure, um, 
prayer isn't passive, it's active. It's really doing something. And prayer isn't the least we can do, it's the most. Uh, prayer is supernatural. It's reaching out of the visible world into the unseen world and tapping into powers beyond this dimension. Prayer picks fights with demons and empowers righteous angels to win those fights. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And that can be found in Ephesians 6, 12. Prayer is never secondary. It's always primary. It's not the last recourse when options run out. It's the first and best recourse. Prayer is the central work which causes all other work to bear fruit. No prayer, no power. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions and with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Prayer also for me, that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me, so that I will fearlessly make known the gospel. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly. And you can find that in Ephesians 6.13, uh, verse 17, and also verses 18 through 20. And I've seen this online before, Barbie. I'm probably sure you've probably seen it as well. Um, someone put up, you know, prayer is not a spare tire um, that you just pull out when you need it. It's having a relationship with God. And I'm guilty of this in my past. And I think everybody, if you're truthful, is... Sometimes you go without prayer and you want to pull out the prayer card when things are bad. And before I got very, you know, rededicated my life and got closer to God, I'll be the first one to say I did that. Um, and I've asked for forgiveness of that. I try to keep my prayer life with God continuous. Um, it's not to just be pulled out when things are bad. Um, he's always brought me out of bad situations and bad things are going on in my life, but I shouldn't use it as a spare tire. I should be praying and, and having a relationship with them all the time. Um, so that's what I wanted to take out of that that I just I went over. Um, anything you want to add to it? <laughs> no, I totally, totally agree okay. with you on that because um, it's easy to, um, to fall away when everything's going well. Everything. Mm -hmm. Good, and then something goes bad and all of a sudden oh my gosh I need your help mm -hmm. we can't forget to thank him for all the things that he has done through the good times you know thank him and I've heard people say well I don't know of anything to be thankful for well if you woke up this morning you've already got something to be thankful for you know he puts the breath in your lungs there's always things to be thankful for um, and focus on those, not on the bad things. Pray to God when something's not going right. Um, you know, ask him for his mercy and, and forgiveness. And God always shows up. It, he answers prayers sometimes, maybe not in the way we, we think mm. that we think they should be answered. But they're answered in the way God knows is best for us. So you got to remember that as well. Um, a prayer is so powerful. And if you if you really get into a into the habit of praying daily and, and, you know, praying multiple times a day. Um, you'll see things start turning around in your life that maybe you didn't have before. And it's a wonderful feeling when you have that relationship with God. Um, God's greatest works accomplishment through prayer are often invisible to us for now. What's visible to us, except in rare moments of clarity, are not God's greatest works. We pray now in faith, believing our prayers are making an eternal difference. We anticipate heaven, where we'll learn God's breathtaking answers to our prayers, including many that seemed unheard and ignored. There is no greater ministry, no higher calling, and no better investment than prayer. It's not just right, it's smart. Prayer is trusting God that he can accomplish more when I'm on my knees than I can accomplish when I'm on my feet. And let's um, also just very quickly go over 10 reasons prayer is important for Christians. Prayer is important for Christians because prayer opens communication with God. It strengthens our faith and trust in God. 
It has the ability to help bring other people closer to God. It's an act of obedience. God calls us to pray. It allows us to intercede on behalf of another person. It can show others the way to Christ. It brings comfort and peace. It gives us opportunity to turn our concerns over to God. It provides a way to show others they are cared for and loved. It reminds us that we don't need to worry. God is in control. And um, Barbie, can you um, kind of summarize for us and, and go over more about how we can pray? Yeah, absolutely. Whether you play or pray alone or in a group setting, those prayers are heard by God. If you are taking a walk and enjoying the beauty of God's creations, pray. When you learn of someone in need of prayer, pause right then and pray. As Christians, the world will know God's love through our words and actions. May peace and comfort fill you as you go to him in prayer. Christians worldwide and throughout history have set aside times to pray daily or multiple times per day. Those who find prayer somewhat difficult may enjoy my marking out short times to pray throughout the day. Try praying for a few minutes with your coffee in the morning, for a few minutes on the evening commute, or before you go to sleep. Um, I personally, I, I have like one or two sentence prayers like all day, mm -hmm. you know, I mean. Me you, too. Yeah, I mean, you know, thank you, Lord, for the food that I'm eating. Um, mm -hmm. Um, I'll, I'll see someone maybe on Facebook that needs prayer. And there are so many people in need now that you can't remember everything. So as soon as I see it, I do a prayer immediately. You know, even if it's just, Lord, oh my gosh, help this person get through what they're going through. Um, mm -hmm. Saw a child missing that was playing in his cul-de-sac yesterday. And he went missing and he'd been gone for a couple hours and they didn't know where he was. And so I stopped right away and prayed that God would send his angels to protect the child until they found him, you know, and he got, he got found an hour or two later, praise God. Um, and I don't know what the reason was, what happened. I don't know, you know, what happened, but they did find the child alive and you know, that's not always the case. And so, you know, you can stop right then and just say a quick little, oh, Lord, please, you know, whatever's going on in their life, help them, you know, send someone, whatever, what, if I can do something, please show me, you know, so it's very simple. It's very easy. It doesn't like, a, I think I've said this before. It doesn't have to be one of those elaborate, beautiful, gorgeous, you know, 30 minute prayers. Um, there's nothing wrong with that either, but it doesn't have to be that. It can be just something short, um, all day stuff. Okay, so I'm, it's just, you know, giving some examples. Um, another thing is, you can, another way to kind of help you understand how to pray is try <laughs> with the Lord's Prayer. This is a pr pretty surefire way to pray the right thing because Jesus scripted it out. Again, this is a practice espoused by Christians since the very beginning of the church. So as you're repeating these words, you're joining in the forever pray meeting, prayer meeting in which God is present and listening. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your, be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you're really yeah. exciting, yeah, um, yeah, you know, one of the things about the Lord's Prayer is when one of the um, positive things about COVID, uh, the virus, I should say, I'm going to get us on the algorithm, but um, virus um, is a lot of people, what they did was, you know, you kept seeing all the videos where they were showing you how to wash your hands and, you, you know, you needed to wash them for 20 seconds and, you know, this, that, and the other. And I started seeing people say, hey, while you're doing that 20 second wash, say the Lord's Prayer. You know, mm -hmm. the Lord's Prayer while you're doing that wash, it's about 20 seconds long. And that's how long you need to wash your hands. And that way you know to pray. And, and that's a great way to think of that. You know, say the Lord's Prayer, girls, while you're putting on your makeup. You know, guys, while you're shaving, you know, whatever. Just, you know, there's, you can do it, you know, all the time in the car. Okay, um, as you're reading or reciting, look for a line that jogs a thought about your life or those you care about. 
maybe finances are tight and you think I'm not sure where my daily bread is coming from, then pray that you're that in your own words, God, please provide for my family. All we need is is provision for today. Most of us likely need to give some extra attention to lead us not into temptation on a daily basis. In our next study, in our next study, 69 weeks to the first com coming, we'll begin to dissect and examine God's response to Daniel's prayer. Or, um, do you want to say anything or close us out? Um, I think next week, um, like she said, it's going to be God's response to Daniel's prayer. And then we're going to get into that 70 weeks of Daniel. And it's um, mm -hmm. quite interesting. It really is. Um, when you get into it, um, it's a little confusing at first. Not going to tell a lie. It's a little confusing. It takes a minute because we have to get our Western culture minds off of things, you know, off of stuff. We got in the way the Jewish, you know, the Hebrews, the Israelites, how they thought, you know, how they think, how their calendar system is. So we got to kind of turn that hat. And that can be tough sometimes because you want to automatically think the way we think, and it's not. It's not the way things are done. So you'll have to, That that's the hardest part is just learning how to turn your mind into a little bit of a different way of thinking. But once you do, it all it is all comes to you, and you will not be confused. You will totally understand. So yeah, it mm -hmm. actually, it, and then it'll just by the time we get done with the series, you'll be, oh my gosh, light bulb come on, <laughs> and you'll you'll yeah, and then you'll understand so much more of what Revelation is about. Mm -hmm. You will. Um, Daniel, to me, is like one of the biggest puzzle pieces that kind of puts Revelation to, together for you. Um, and it's taking a little bit of time to write. It's going to be probably at least two to three, maybe even four more weeks of study of Daniel. Because um, I'm trying to simplify it as much as I can if you're not familiar. Those definitions we did at the beginning, like I said, I do recommend printing those off. It will help as we're going over this with you in the, in the future weeks. Um, and I'll put it in the description box, too, as a PDF. Mm -hmm. i just print it. The prayer, though, I thought was important that we start off with that because, um, you know, it's so important to have that daily prayer life with, with God. And let's end our study and um, let's pray. And we'll also ask God to help all of us with, you know, discernment in the future weeks so that we fully understand what Daniel's, the 70 weeks of prophecy is. Okay. Mm, definitely. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for bringing us all together today and to study Daniel's prayer and how to pray to you. And, and Lord, we know that you are God Almighty, and we thank you for everything that you've done for us. We love you, and we praise you, and we give you honor and glory. And, Lord, we know that we're sinners. Um, and Lord, help us to use Daniel's prayer as, as a guide in, in what we should be covering with you in our prayers. Um, you know, it needs to be straight from our heart, and we need to acknowledge everything that we've done wrong, our sins, and ask for your forgiveness. We also ask for your guidance in everything that we do, Lord, and any problems we're having in our life, Lord, we lay them at your feet, and we ask that you answer in the way that you know best for us, because, Lord, we know we're your children. We also know that you love us and that you're going to answer the prayer in what's the best way for us. Lord, I pray every person watching this will, will strengthen their prayer life and grow closer to you. And Lord, we also ask that as we studied, you know, Daniel, that as we reveal these visions and the prophecy that you gave Daniel, that you would open our eyes and, and help us to understand the book of Revelation a little bit more and your coming and, and bringing us home to be with you. And Lord, if we have anyone watching today that has not accepted you as their savior, Lord, I pray that they would come to know you if I have someone on here that is ready to say that prayer, just repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. 
Jesus, we thank you for covering our sins with your blood. I ask that you please forgive me of my sins. And I believe that you resurrected and that you are coming back again. And just help me to grow in your word, to study your word, and to grow closer to you and to fellowship with other believers. And Lord, we just ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Flora. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave, like I said, I'll leave the um, leave the copy of the definitions in the description box. I'm also going to leave a left behind letter in the description box if you'd like to print it, um, as many as you want to leave for your family and friends in the event that we are raptured and so that they'll know what's going on. We're going to end it. It's also going to have a rapture kit um, website that you can go to. We actually put the left behind letter together, but the rapture um, site is someone else's. And um, if you would please um, hit that like button. We'd appreciate it. Subscribe. If you want notifications when we're going to be putting up our next video, make sure you click on the bell. We're, and um, we're also on Facebook and we are on Rumble, which will be in the description box as well. So if you guys have questions, let us know. Leave a comment. Send us an email at twofriendsinabible at gmail.com. We'll be happy to answer. And we appreciate you so much. Maranatha. Got anything for? Yeah, just very quickly, want to give some special thanks. Um, putting these studies together on this week's Randy Alcorn. He's with Eternal Perspective Ministries at www.epm.org. And also Nelson Walters. I used a lot of, um, went through a lot of their materials to help put this together. So just want to give them special thanks. And most of all, give the glory to the Lord Jesus Christ for, for, pointing us in the right direction and helping us put this together and I'm, I'm praying it's a blessing to someone yes as always you did a fabulous job thank you thank you i appreciate it you guys y'all have a good one and we'll we will thank you another video soon have a good one have a good one bye